Hey there, you're watching Wildflower Video Tips. I'm Lindsay Mo. Today I'm going to show you how to use motion effects in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you're not already using motion effects in your recipe videos, I'm super excited for you because there's so many different ways we can use them. I'm just gonna scratch the surface on the basics today. If this is something that interests you, definitely leave a comment or head over to the Facebook group, which I've linked down below, and let me know there. I can definitely come back and create a more advanced tutorial for you. Motion effects are things like scale, rotation, and position of your clips. There are a lot of different ways we can use them, and I'm excited to show you. Let's dive in. The most basic needs for motion effects are changing the scale or position. If you have something in frame that you didn't intend, you can zoom in a bit to remove it. Let's imagine, for example, I have lights set up on either side of this pan, and I've run into the problem where you can just see a little bit of the stand there. It's not there right now, but let's just imagine. I'm going to click on this clip and go up to the effects panel and I can just drag scale to adjust and it will cut out the edges of the video. You can also type in whatever number you'd like, but dragging is a nice easy way to get it done. You may also want to adjust the rotation of a clip. You can see in this one I have rotated it 180 degrees. If it were back at zero, the hands are coming from the top and it just feels a little awkward. I find it looks better if the hands are coming from the bottom, like the person who's watching it is cooking the food themselves. This is especially useful if you are shooting with a tripod that is set up across from you because likely the way your camera is sitting, it will record upside down. Using these two, you can adjust any clip to wherever you need it. For example, here in my tall pins, as we've covered before in my tall video pin video, I like to keep the video on top. So I would just click on that and then come over to position and 540 by 540 puts that right on top of my sequence, which is set at 1080 by 2160. And this image down here on the bottom is larger than the sequence, so I can use scale and position to adjust that. And you can see this number on the left moves it left and right, and this number on the right moves it up and down. This is also useful if you are creating a square video from your 16 by 9. I edit all my videos in the 16 by 9 format and then highlight, copy, and paste into my square sequence. You can see in this example, let's go down here, it's the same clip where there's not a title. This video I have adjusted so that it is centered if it were originally at 540 by 540, the fork is scooping up the food off to the left and it just feels a little awkward. So I'm going to just drag this left number over to the right until it's right where I want it to be. And that looks much better. You'll want to pay attention to things like this if you are shooting in a pan overhead or a food processor. It becomes really obvious once you have a circle within the square if it's off by quite a bit. If you're interested in creating more dynamic recipe videos, you can animate your motion effects by using keyframes. This is not a normal clip that I would zoom in on, but we'll use it as an example. I'm going to click on it and press the up arrow to go to the very first frame of that clip. And then over here under effects controls, we are in the effects panel. I'm going to click on this toggle animation stopwatch to turn on animation effects. And that creates a keyframe at the beginning of this clip. Wherever I set the scale for this keyframe is where this clip will start out. 
So I'm happy with it right where it is at 100%. I'm going to come down here and press down arrow, back arrow to get to the very last frame of this clip where I'm going to increase it to 105. That creates a second keyframe telling the clip to animate between 100% and 105% over the course of the clip. And that was a very slow zoom in, so I am going to increase that a little bit. I can do that by clicking on the keyframe. Moving the playhead over to the keyframe. And let's try 110. And that does a very slow zoom in. You might want to do that on your hero shot or if you're holding something for a long time to create more visual interest. You can also add as many keyframes as you'd like in there. This is great if you want to animate your titles. Let's say I want the position to start out at the top and I want it to come down by the end. This is not necessarily something I would want to do, but just as an example to show you what is what it's capable of. If you wanted, you could set another keyframe in the middle. To add another keyframe, you just click this tiny circle in between the two arrows and tell it what you want it to do. Now I've set both of those to 540, so if I wanted it to do something different, again I would click on this keyframe so it's blue, and maybe we'll tell it to go back to zero. This is a very basic understanding of how to use keyframes and motion effects. You can do a lot more with smoothing out the animation, but I just want you to be aware of what's possible and how to use especially the position, scale, and rotation. This is also especially useful if you are creating more slideshow style videos rather than a video you shot with your camera. You might be using static images from your blog post and animating them with a little zoom in the scale or motion in the position can help make them more interesting and dynamic and catch your viewers' attention more. That's it! Motion effects have so many uses in recipe videos. I really hope you'll try this out. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. I am here every Tuesday with a new video. If you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to hit like, hit subscribe, and otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye!